So what do you do when the impeller on your generator is not pumping water anymore? You change it yourself. Let me show you how. Hey everybody, this is Captain Frank and we are on the boat today. Got a little bit of a project that uh, that we need to work on. Got something that we have to fix. Um, I'm actually here because I am going to be putting one of these in the generator that is on my boat. Uh, if you're not familiar with what this is, this is an impeller. This is what actually pumps the cooling water through the generator on the boat to make sure that it doesn't overheat. Um, your engines have them too, uh, but I'm doing the one on the generator today. Uh, the last time I started the generator up, uh, I looked to where the exhaust comes out and I didn't see any water and uh, that's not good. So uh, that is a sure indication that your impeller has gone bad. So, and you don't want to run your generator or your engines for that matter if that cooling water is not getting circulated through because of course that's going to cause it to overheat and might get some damage there. So as soon as I realized I didn't have any water coming out there, shut it down. I ordered an impeller. So today we're going to go ahead and replace that so that we will be all good again. So let's get to work. Okay, so my boat has a Westerbeek 6.5 kilowatt generator. And in order to get to uh, where the impeller is, uh, we've got to take this cover off right here. So that is the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to take that cover off and then you'll actually get to see the, uh, the housing where the impeller is as well as the, the belt that drives it and so on and so forth. So let's get this going. Okay, now that we've closed the seacock, uh, and really in my particular case, I didn't really need to close the seacock because where my um, impeller is and where it's well above the water line, but uh, it's just for, hey, why not be safe, right? But if the area that you're opening, if the hoses that you're gonna be disconnecting are below the water line, you definitely want to close the seacock to make sure that you don't have water coming in. So this is the housing right here where the impeller is. So I basically have to take this loose. I'm gonna do that by removing these bolts, which allows me to, to slide this forward, remove the belt, and then I should be able to get it loose, open up the housing, and replace the impeller. So let's get started with that. And of course, while you're at it, it's a good uh, excuse to check out the belt and uh, how good a shape it's in. This one's not bad, but you know, I'm not, I'm not too far from replacing it, I think. So, I mean, it's still got some life on it, um, but that's something I need to keep in mind. So, so that aside, Now I should be able to take these screws out right here and get to the impeller.
All right, now when you take this off, you do wanna make sure that you completely clean this old seal off. So get a scraper, whatever you have to do, but make sure you get all of that out there because you, you, don't, wanna, you don't want the old seal or pieces of the old seal to prevent the new one from sealing up like it should. So just remember that. Uh, also, when you're pulling the old one out, make sure that you take note as to which way the fins are bent back because when you put the new one back in you want to make sure that you do that the same way so in this case the fins are basically at the top anyway they're actually bent back towards the stern of the boat so i'm going to keep that in mind because when i put the new one in i want to make sure i put that one in the same way <sighs> yep, it's definitely uh, seen better days. So we see we have pieces that have broken off. And one of the things that we're going to have to do is uh, we want to make sure that we get all those pieces out. So we don't want to leave those pieces in. Hopefully they're right in here where we can get to them. But if not, we may have to take couple of hoses off and, and dig down in there but we don't want to leave those pieces in the cooling system because uh, that's obviously going to cause a problem. Okay, so since I'm gonna have to dig in here, I think there might be a couple of pieces in this little elbow here. I need to clean those out. I'm also gonna check in here. I decided to just go ahead and take the pump off. And that'll also make it easier, of course, to get the new impeller in when it's time to do this. But right now I got some digging in there because I, I can see some chunks down in there that, that I need to get out. Okay, now is for the fun part. Um, since I took the pump all the way off, we just came up here to where we got a little better working surface here. Um, I actually put the old one back in here just temporarily so I can remember which way the fins were, were, uh, were pointing. Um, but I'm going to pull that back out. I actually did go around uh, the surfaces here as well as on the cap. I went around with a razor blade just to make sure that all the extra... Uh, junk was cleaned off of there. The next thing I'm going to do is 
I am going to use some dish soap. Now, you can use dish, dish soap for this. You can use, I've seen people use personal lubricant, uh, glycerin, whatever, but the whole idea is to make this nice and slippery. Okay, so you can use it gener uh, generously to make it nice and slippery so that that new impeller will go in there pretty easily. Um, whatever you do use, you do not want to use anything that is petroleum based, you know, motor oil or grease or something like that because that is going to damage your impeller. That will cause it to, uh, to break down. So you don't want to use that. Um, the next thing I did is, and actually I'm going to take some of this and put it on the impeller itself, and then I'll show you what I did with the impeller. Again, I'm putting that liberally on there. But the next thing I did is I actually took a couple of zip ties, and as you see, I've kind of um, uh, pre-folded the fins on the impeller here, and I put the zip ties uh, here to, to hold it. Obviously, the zip tie is not going to go into the housing, but that's just something to allow me to get it started. Once I get, get it in there and get it started, then I can snip the uh, or pull the zip ties off. I've also seen people just tie string around here and do the same thing, so that may work as well. The string thing never really worked out very well for me. So this is the first time trying the zip tie, so we'll see. Now in my case, this um, housing actually has, the shaft actually has a key on it. And that needs to correspond with the uh, little slot that's actually in here on the impeller. Um, some shafts are different, some of them actually um, have uh, uh, gears on it, if you will. I'm not sure if that's the right term, but um, but just make sure you, you you're aware as to whether there's a key on your shaft or whether it's some other type of design to make sure that it that can actually can grab to the impeller and and turn it. So I'm just going to try to get that. I think that might be it. And let's see, all these things are turned here. Yep. Make sure that as you're pushing it in, you're not, uh, oh, let's see here. I don't think I had that. Let me see if I can turn this to where it's straight up and down. There we go. And you know, for, for me, it's always been a play with it for a while until it finally goes in. You know, some people are Probably a little better at this than I am, but uh, that's just what I'm trying to do. And uh, that just might be it. I'm making sure that the fins are all still folded in the right direction as I'm pushing it. Okay, I'm going to pull the zip ties off. There we go. So, uh, yep. Looks like we got it. So, <sighs> clean my hands up a little bit. Clean this off a little bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the seal that came with the impeller. And you'll see that there's a little pin right here. And the best way is to simply figure out uh, which way this is going to line up. You want to look at everything, look at the design of the seal, look at the uh, screw holes, and make sure that as you're placing this on here, you are getting them all right. I think that still needs to be pushed in just a little bit. There we go. So 
So you want to line the pin up, line the screw holes up, make sure everything looks good. There's actually a pin on this side as well. And it looks like one of the holes they punched for the screws didn't completely punch through. So let me see if I can get, I guess it's a hanging chad. I guess that's what that is. Okay, get that off of there. Now let's try this again. Uh, that's not the right way. It should be something like this. There we go. All right, now, so we got the two pins in there. All of the screw holes are lined up. Now, we're going to do the same thing with the cover. That's going to fit over the two uh, pin holes as well. Make sure we're getting that right. There we go. Yep, nope, that's not it. I do believe that is it. All right. Now, we're going to put all of our screws back in. And then once we'll, we finish this, make sure they're all nice and tight, we'll go back down there and basically just install the pump. The exact opposite of what we did to, uh, to pull it out. And of course we'll put that belt back on. And uh, we should be done. Now obviously your generator uh, maybe different, you know, this is a, a late 80s model, 6.5 kilowatt uh, Westerbeek. Um, so yours may be different, but the process of installing an impeller uh, is pretty much the same. Once you get the housing off, you pull the impeller out, you make sure you um, take note of which direction the fins are, are bending, put the new impeller back in, put everything back together, and there you go. It's the same for my engines, except the impellers, of course, are bigger. Um, the housing uh, is bigger. But, uh, you know, it, and the housing comes apart maybe a little differently, but, um, but yeah, that's pretty much the same thing. And let me get this rag so I can get some grip and make sure that I'm really... tightening these up really well. Okay, so I've installed the pump back to exactly the way it was before, of course. I have also put the belt back on, tightened up the bolts. Um, one more thing that I'm going to do, this right here is actually a screen. Uh, it actually screens the water that's coming in up out of the lake or the river or whatever, wherever your boat is. And it just captures any trash in that screen before it sends it on through the system. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that out. Uh, it's good to do that at least once a year, uh, possibly more often, depending on the waters that you're in. Obviously, when you're doing maintenance like this, perfect time to do this. So, if I can get this thing off. There we go. So, you can see... There's some trash in there. It's not a whole lot, but there's definitely some trash in there. So we'll dump that out, rinse the screen out, and we'll put it back. Now we'll put it back on there nice and tight. And uh, by the way, your engines are gonna have screens like this as well. So uh, you'll need to do that with your engines as well. So, all right, so man, we are good to go. The only other thing that I have to do is open up the seacock again, do not forget to do that. Otherwise, otherwise it won't be able to suck up any water. So uh, yeah, and now we're good. So we're gonna start it up and see what happens. 
And it was right after that that my camera died. Of course, normally I do have extra batteries with me, but in this particular case, in my haste to leave the house that day, I had forgotten all of my spare batteries. I did restart the generator, and as expected, water was coming out of the exhaust, indicating that it was getting cooled like it was supposed to. My job was done, I buttoned everything back up, and was happy with my success for the day. If you feel this video was helpful to you, please do not forget to like the video, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. It really does help me. Also, don't forget to share it with anybody who you think might like it. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy boating.